Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game City Builder Ancient World by Inside Up Games. This is a one to four player board game that plays in about 45 minutes to an hour and is for ages eight and up. And in the game City Builder Ancient World, you are going to be placing tiles down to create a city. You're going to use those tiles to form little areas where you can once again place monuments or you can go ahead and place settlers, whether they be the average folk or the nobles. On your turn, you're going to basically be drawing from this bag here in the cooperative variant and putting down one of these tracks, then you're going to be taking a tile from your hand and placing it down, checking to see if you can take any of these monuments and place them in your city, and or being able to place either settlers from this board here, or being able to place nobles from um, also the board onto your city. And then you're going to go ahead and draw a new tile and pass, and the next player is going to do the same thing. And you'll be progressing up until the point where you're able to either complete all of the objectives that you need to based on your variant, or if one of these tracks get filled up, you lose. Very basic in principle, tile placement style game with some unique little intrinsic seeds. Let's go ahead and talk about the setup, how to play, and then of course our review. So this is the setup for the cooperative variant of the game, which I will also be reviewing after this. Uh, for the competitive variant, we'll probably do a separate video. In the cooperative variant's setup, you're going to be taking these tracks here. Now this side here with lots of numbers is the competitive side, and this side with just six numbers is the cooperative. You'll place one down for each player and you'll place these tracks between all players. Then you're going to go ahead and give each player a starting board. They'll have a number on it and they'll be larger than the other tiles in the game. Each player is also going to be gaining three starter tiles, which will say the color of the starter and that there are three of them, you'll place them in front of each of those players as well as two game reference cards. Go ahead and take all the nobles, there should be four of each color, and place them outside of the board somewhere within reach of all players. Then you'll be taking one of these, there are multiple of them and some of them are front and back, that have a unique ability for when certain things happen in the game. This is going to be a more challenging aspect to the game, you can go ahead and add one of them if you'd like, as well as of course monuments. Now depending on the number of players in the game, they will determine how many monuments are out. In a two player game, we are going to have five monuments and for the average mode, the medium mode, and we'll need to complete four of them. If I wanted to though, we could go for uh, five monuments out of six and it'll just progress from there with more players. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and take all of the tiles, place them out within reach of all players, and select three of them at random and place them face up. This will form the draw pool. This is where you're going to be gathering more tiles throughout the game. Any extra tiles will not be used in this game mode, but you'll be using them for a larger player game. And finally, the city builder bag, which is where you're going to be placing all your settlers of all the five different colors. These are the smaller little buildings. Put them in here and then make sure that you shuffle these guys up and place it down within reach. And then after that, choose a player to go first. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Playing the cooperative game is quite simple as well. The first player who's going to start is going to look at the tiles in their hand. They're also gonna have a starting tile that's in, in front of them and make sure that you have quite a bit of space around your starting tile because you're gonna be placing a lot of other tiles uh, next to it. And you're going to be looking at your competitive slash cooperative card here. And the bottom will tell you how to play the cooperative game mode. And there are three phases in this game. The first phase is immigration. How that works is you will pull out one of these settlers from the bag here and you will place it down on either of the tracks that you'd like, starting with one and moving down. So I could choose to place it on this track here. It doesn't matter which one you place it on. And then after that, you're basically done. But there are a few rules. One rule is if you get the same color as another of these settlers here, so for instance you get orange, and you choose to place it underneath the same colored uh, type, this is going to turn into a noble. These are going to go back in the bag, and this is going to come out and be placed in the space closest to the top. Uh, if, however, you decide to get to be of an orange here and you decide to pull out another orange, you can choose to place it over here. You're always able to choose which of these you would like to place your uh, settlers on. And with more players, there's going to be options that are based on either left or right board of this type. So you're not going to get the choice of all of them, just the ones that are adjacent to you. Um, if at any reason, for any reason at all, you move down this track and you place your fifth and then finally sixth settler, 
that is going to end the game and you guys are going to lose. So that is the way the game will end in a loss. If you pull out too many of these guys, you can't take them off quick enough, that's how you will lose. Another thing to note is you should always check to see this little guy here. This is going to be a change of game type of a tile. This is the most important aspect to um, your difficulty. So this one here is a heat wave, which says that settler tracks are allowed a maximum of four settlers each. Okay, so uh, the max you can have is four, and if you get a fifth one, then you will lose with this specific tile. Because normally it is you can have five, but if you get six, you lose. So always check these things to make sure that you know the difficulty of the game what could happen. Some of them are going to be vastly different. If you pull out a purple and you place it down, maybe you're going to have to pull out another one of the settlers. But anyway, yes, that's the basic first aspect of the game. Take out a settler, place it on either board that's adjacent to you, and pass. As long as it doesn't hit that bottom area, you're okay. Next is your expansion. Expansion is pretty simple. You'll take a tile from your hand and you'll add it to your city. Tiles can be placed adjacent on any side to a city as long as it's on the bottom left or right, top left or right, or far left or far right. You can never place it like in the middle. You'll see how it makes sense. Roads have to always connect if they are able to connect and if there is a road. So I would go ahead and place this guy in any way I so choose and you can rotate them as well. And I'll place this guy just like this. After you have added a tile to your city, you are then going to choose to claim settlers or you can choose and or monuments. So settlers are going to be on this board here, and you might throughout the game have a certain number of them. Maybe it looks something like this. Uh, you can choose to take these guys off and place them on your board, or you might have these nobles, which are also settlers, and you might be able to place them on your board. And additionally, you might have these monuments, uh, that you will. <laughs> there's going to be a certain number of them. You can take these and place them on your board, but there's rules as to how you can place them. At the very beginning of the game, you're not going to be placing any of them, sadly, but how you can place them is actually detailed on this card here. This card states that if you would like to place a small settler uh, that is green, you will need a monument in that area. Now, an area is basically an enclosed space with roads, and there are two types of, of objects in here. You're going to have um, the houses, and then you're also going to have these landmarks. Landmarks are one of each color, which are referencing these specific four types here. You have blue, orange, red, and green, and houses are white. So when you enclose an area, so if I had another, if I had an enclosed area, which might look something like this, um, I will check to see what I have inside that area based on what I have inside of what I can place down. So a small green requires a green landmark and any other type of landmark. A blue is a blue landmark in any type of landmark, and so on and so forth up until you get with purple. Purples are more difficult. It doesn't matter what landmarks you have to place a purple inside an enclosed area, but you must have three of them. Placing these nobles are even more challenging. To place a green noble, you will need two green landmarks, and you will need a, a third of any type. And that will be the same for all four colors, except for purple, which is you will need one of every type of landmark to place one down. Also note, don't forget, that in, in addition to the landmarks you need, you're also going to need at least one house to house them. So if I had three houses and one of each landmark, then I could place three of the purple nobles in that area. And when you're placing, after you've placed your tile down, you can select as many of these guys as you want or you can and you'll be putting them down on this board here, hopefully fulfilling your objectives. Well, speaking of objectives, these guys here are your monuments. Uh, the, the, these guys here are going to define what you need in your city in order to complete them. So for instance, one of them might say, this city must have five uh, or more populated districts with one empty house or more. Uh, uh, and the districts are the enclosed areas. So district is like if I had two landmarks and I had two houses and it was blocked off all by roads, that's what a district would be. But you could choose as opposed to these or in, in addition to if you have an area that literally fits this size as a district, you can place it down onto that area and it will stay face up up until the point in which you complete it. So if at any point in time I have five districts with at least one empty house in them, I could flip this over on my turn and I can complete this. 
Now, why is that important? Well, it is important because once you have met the requirements for your objectives, as a team, you'll win. And in this mode of play, the normal mode, you'll be having to complete four of the five. So if I put down two on my city and complete them, and Callie put down two on her city and completed them, we would win. Uh, theoretically as well, I could take all four of them and can complete them, and Callie could have none, and that would be just fine, as long as she's hopefully contributing in some way. But that's basically how the expansion works. Add a tile, then after you add one, check to see what closed districts you have and place down your settlers slash nobles, as well as perhaps these, uh, these landmarks here, monuments, monuments, and place them on your board, hopefully completing them. And the last thing is pretty simple. It's your upkeep. You will draw a tile from one of the three tiles in the supply and you replace one from the stack. So I could take this tile here, put it in my hand and then reveal a new one and pass. And then the next player would get a chance to go and they would go ahead and pull one of these guys out. They would place it on either of their adjacent boards here. They would go ahead and expand by placing a new tile down and they're going to check to see if they can put anything on their board here. And if they can, they do. If they can't, they pass. And finally, they will take a new tile and they will flip over another one to include into the pool. And that's basically how the game is gonna go. You're gonna progressively be expanding your area, hopefully removing these guys, as well as perhaps even taking nobles and creating them on purpose or on accident, depending on how it works out for you. And being able to put those on your board as well, hopefully completing these four, of, uh, these four uh, different objectives here. Uh, and note, the way you win is by removing four of the five here for this game mode, or if this track goes all the way to zero, you will lose. A small, obvious, but maybe not so obvious rule is when you take these settlers from this track here, you are always going to be taking them from the top slot going down. So you can't select anyone that you want. You can't start from the bottom unless one of these little tiles says so. In general, you're gonna be pulling these, which is fine because you'll have an idea at least of what you're going to need in order to complete and take these guys off and put them on your cities. Anyway, though, that's pretty much the idea of the cooperative game. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it. So generally speaking, I'm not very good at puzzly games. So they make me quite frustrated after a period of time. But what I've learned is that playing cooperative puzzly games where I can work interchangeable with my allies and kind of create this common goal slash purpose and help each other out, it makes all the difference for me. And I greatly enjoy those type of games. And City Builder is like that. You are cooperatively building cities. Now you have your own individual city, so you feel like you have your own agency and you can always make your own choices, but it never hurts to ask somebody else, hey, which of these different objectives are you trying to do? Okay, I'll try and do this objective. Oh, okay, do you need that color? You do? Okay, I'll take the next color. And you have to kind of formulate a plan of how you're going to be taking the settlers off of this track to make sure that by the time your turn comes around, you're able to get rid of some of these things, especially if you're going to have an issue with uh, this getting too close to the very bottom of the board here which makes you possibly lose the game. Um, you're being able to build your own city and that means you're going to be allowed to build small districts or medium districts or insanely large districts. And uh, how you're building districts matters because the more districts that you build, uh, the more different types of workers you can place if they're small or if you build one really big one, you can put them all down as long as you meet the requirements. And the requirements are different for all of them, right? A small settler is pretty simple. You can have a monument and then a monument of any other color and then as long as you've got a house, you can put it on that house. Uh, houses are important because the more houses you have in a district allows you to place more of the settlers. With just monuments, you can't place anything. So you have to make sure that you have some houses in order for you to house the nobles and the settlers. But when you get these nobles out on the board, it will ease up the tension on your board here. There's going to be less of them. Uh, there's gonna be, um, these guys are going to go away and you'll just get one as opposed to two on this track, which means you're less likely to lose as quickly. But if you don't have spaces to place them, they are more challenging. A green, like I said, is two of the green monuments and one of any other one, and you have to have a house, which means you have to have at least four icons on your area in your district in order to at least place one. So making larger districts with enough of the monuments is going to let you place down these nobles. And there's a variety of different objectives, right? Some of them will require you to have at least four more nobles in the city. And once you get that, that's where you can flip this over and succeed. And you get to kind of plan out which of the boards you place what on, how you pull from each of the different locations, and you're only worrying about the boards that you can take stuff off of, even in a three or a four player game. 
Uh, Settlers, a city builder, ancient world is is, is a very challenging game, actually. There's a lot of thinking in it, there's a lot of puzzling in it, and you have to make sure that you secure your board in order to protect you and your allies to your adjacent sides uh, from their board filling up. Taking too long and building too big of a district will mean you might not get, a, get to place enough settlers down quick enough for your game to end. Not getting enough districts or not large enough districts will mean that you're not going to be able to place enough of them and you'll have to make more tiles for less value. Additionally to having the right tiles and placing them in the right locations at the right time is going to benefit you greatly. You might get stuck with colors you don't want on this board here, not have the colored monuments on your city inside your districts to place down those settlers and nobles, in which case you're going to have issues as well. And so there's a lot of thought you need to be putting into this game to succeed. The variety of the different types of objectives is great too, as well as the difficulty uh, tiles that you can change to the game, and they each have front and backs. Uh, the one that lets you play with only four settlers max makes the game a little more challenging, but doesn't involve any extra rules, where something like every city must build one completed district with four different landmarks and no vacant houses, uh, and changes the board in which you're trying to build throughout the game, or every time a purple settler is added to a track, the commoner ch cl closest to the front of the line becomes a noble. So when you add a purple, now you're going to get these guys that you have to deal with, which are a little more challenging. So each of these small tiles here represents a different vast change to the game and how you're going to perceive making your board and what people have throughout the game as well. It all comes down to communication. It all comes down to working within what you have and the tiles that you can utilize. Everybody starts off with three basic tiles and your larger board, which is nice, but eventually you're not going to know what's going to pop up in that little pool of tiles there. The game starts getting pretty pretty straightforward after you've gone through a few rounds. You'll understand what you can do and what you can build. And of course, the game's, uh, the game's kind of like flow is easy as well. Immigration, expansion, upkeep. Immigration is you draw one and put it on. Expansion is you place a tile and then put anything you can on your board. And finally is upkeep, where you simply take a new tile and fill out a new one. It doesn't play much more complicated than Carcassonne, and it has a little bit of a similar feel as well. Um, but you're having your own little unique cities. Uh, there is a competitive game mode to this as well, and it basically functions fairly similar, but instead you're using this track here, and whenever you take settlers, you'll score points based on where you place them on. I haven't played that enough to give you a full review on it, but I have played enough of the cooperative mode, because for once, this is a nice puzzly game I really, really enjoy. Um, normally I'm just terrible at them, so this was kind of a nice, like, breath of fresh air to try out. So let's go ahead and get into it. Like, I really, really, really like the artwork. I love the feeling of the city. You can see where your districts are. You can kind of make these big districts with lots of monuments and lots of houses or small little contained ones that matter because sometimes you're going to want to be adjacent to populated districts and you have to start certain ones of these objectives earlier on in the game. So each of your cities are always going to be different and you're going to have different types of settlers based on your objectives and based on what each of you kind of is doing to work together. I love the communication in this game. It's social, but it's also thinky. So you're focusing on your board and then you have to go, okay guys, this is what I can do. What can you do? Oh, okay, I'll try and take this objective. But things change throughout the game. Different tiles pop up and you're able to complete other objectives easier and you have to on the fly go hey guys how about I take this objective instead is it gonna mess anybody up can I still utilize it I can do the other one but maybe this one's a little bit more easier is anybody closer and that matters because the longer you take the more chances that this board is gonna fill up and you're going to lose the game it's a very straightforward, thinky puzzler with social aspects, and I really, really like that. I love the quality of the components. All the meeples are great. I really kind of wish, actually, that instead of settlers, uh, like so the peasants and the nobles, I kind of wish it was like little people that go in the houses for the settlers, and then the nobles could be, or maybe instead of nobles, it could be like uh, a big house. I don't know, I think that would kind of be cool, because I'm not, putting houses on houses kind of, kind of feels a little weird, but I, I get what it's doing. You're building either small houses for settlers or large houses for the nobles, and I, I'm not going to complain too much about that. Yes, there's some luck in the game. You're going to be drawing tiles and you have certain selection, but because it's cooperative and because if you're playing two, three, four players, you're going to see new tiles up on the board, you can kind of work together as to what tiles you want. Guys, I need to have a monument that is blue on my next tile I get. So on my next turn, you guys need to make sure you don't take one if it pops out. And as you know, there's going to be a large variety of tiles that are going to pop out 
two, and then finally the next player is going to take this one to where hopefully a blue one is going to spawn as long as nobody didn't take it. Now in this case I would have gotten screwed, but it's possible that you're going to get what you need, especially because multiple tiles can have multiple monuments on them. I love the availability of the game changing mechanic as you switch it up and they have a front and back side. Some of them feel a little bit more difficult than others, but it's going to be random and uh, depending, I guess, on what tiles you get and the game mode you're playing will determine how much more difficult it is. But yes, this is a thinky, deep, strategical game, beautiful components, really wonderful little artwork. It feels like you're building an ancient world and it feels like you're working together to where no one is going to be able to alpha game because they're so focused on what they're able to do. Uh, that it's still nice because you can ask for help and people when they have that second to like, okay, it's no longer their turn now and they kind of have an idea what they want to do, they can give you pointers or say what you can use and that's where it comes in. That's where it's nice and like the game feels very tight. There are moments in the game and each of the games I've played and the first one they played where it felt like they were going to lose and then they came back or they felt like they were winning and suddenly these started piling up because people weren't able to place them down on their game boards and that is a great feeling regardless of whether you win or lose and yes, you can lose in this game, especially Especially with more players it gets more challenging because you have to worry about different boards um, but that's a fun aspect to the game it's enjoyable because you're not just guaranteed to win it doesn't feel like at any point oh we got this in the bag all of a sudden things can change which is nice but it still sticks to the basic formula overall city builder ancient world is a ton of fun a beautiful cool game that I'll be keeping for a while because the puzzler my wife likes that I don't mind playing either. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Ancient World or City Builder. If you're interested in picking the game up, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. You can also check out our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list lists, and more. Our live stream is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one. In fact, we did play, we played this one this last Sunday. So you can go ahead and check out the stream and watch me like Brainiac my way to trying to understand this stuff while Callie was able to breeze through it. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. Uh, as always, I look forward to building an ancient world with you next time.